Hey, I'm Melissa of Blessed's Mess, and today we're making the easiest homemade apple pie. This one is not anything but apple pie, and it is, for, for how much effort you're putting in, it is the best apple pie out there because it is so easy. We're literally just gonna peel and slice apples, add a tiny amount of sugar, it's only three tablespoons, flour, cinnamon, we're gonna toss it, put it in a pie crust, and you're done. We're not pre-cooking apples, we're not making homemade caramel sauce. There's a lot of recipes out there, but if you're a beginning beginner or you're just wanting to get a delicious apple pie on the table, this is my go-to recipe. It, it, it's just not anything except for what it is. The apples have bright flavor, it's just really good and really simple. I like simple food. So we're just gonna peel and slice. This is a great activity for kids, if your kids are around. My kids help me make apple pie most of the time. And peeling is for cosmetics. You could technically leave them on. We actually grew these apples. That's why this one has a blemish. I'll just cut it out, little wormhole. Might have actually been where a stick poked it. So we grew, I think we have four different kinds of apples. We have 12 ap apple trees right now, hoping to expand. And the types of apples that you use just use what you have on hand. That's the beauty of this recipe too. There's a lot of flexibility. I like mixing kinds. I have, I like a firm apple. You can do a firm sweet apple, a firm tart apple. I like to do like this is a little Granny Smith. I like to do a third Granny Smith, a third tart, and then two thirds firm sweet. And then you don't have to add as much sugar. If you're adding all Granny Tart. Granny tart. If you're adding all tart apples to your pie, you can double the sugar. Just taste it. Sometimes I'll just taste a little bit of the pie filling and if it tastes sweet, then it's enough. So you can add six tablespoons or about a half a cup of sugar if you want to tart apples. If, if you're working with pretty sweet apples, you don't need much. You're gonna want six to eight medium apples. for a lot of people is they think this takes a lot of time. I bet that took me four minutes. It's less than a minute an apple just to peel. And this, compost, chickens. I used to have a dog that really liked to eat them and we miss him so much. I need to feed my worms. I have a worm compost bin. So I'm gonna save those and feed them to my worms. So to chop the apples, this is the easiest way. Just cut to one side. So I cut to one side, then you lay it flat. And you're cutting just right outside the core. So you have a little bit, my kids will nibble on these. But it's just a lot easier than trying to like cut it in half and then cut that core out. It's kind of a tedious process. And it's okay, um, some of these are quite soft apples. They're a little bit, they're getting mushy. I, I needed to use them, that's why we're making pie today. So you can slice them really thin if you like them to kind of like melt and be one piece. You can slice them a little bit thicker if you like to have a piece of apple. I'm going for somewhere in the middle. These are about a half an inch thick. Some of these, the Golden Delicious, were really soft. I'm gonna, I'm gonna slice them a hair thicker than a half an inch just so that they don't totally disintegrate. So I'm just gonna slice my apples now. Real time on this is less than 10 minutes. I think I used to think that pie took forever to make, especially from homemade, from these apples that we grew ourselves. I mean, there's just so much good juju in here and it's actually not as much of a commitment as I thought. So here are my apples in a bowl. I'm just gonna sprinkle them with my sugar. Getting a little crazy. My flour and cinnamon. That's all that I do. You could use apple pie spice if you prefer. Then I'm just mixing to combine. The sugar will help absorb some of the apple's juices and make like a pie filling texture. That is it, they are well tossed. And I'm gonna leave them there. We're gonna get a pie crust. This is part two of how to make an apple pie. I made homemade pie crust. If you have a favorite recipe, do that. You're gonna need a double pie crust because you need a top crust, bottom crust. If you don't have a favorite recipe, I, just filmed a video for this pie crust. And so I would love to teach you my method. It's really simple. I do a shortening and butter combined crust. I feel like it's really easy to work with and you get a nice result. You can also buy a store-bought crust. That is totally up to you. 
I really like homemade crust though. I have not had great luck finding a store-bought crust that I like. So flour your surface well and flour the top of the dough. It's in the mood to split a bit. So I'm just gonna kinda keep putting it back together. So I like to turn it really often so that it, I know it's not sticking to the counter. That is the worst when you've rolled out a whole crust and half of it's stuck and you have to start over. And if you get little splits that are making it not circular, fold them over and kind of press it back together so that you can keep with a round pie crust. So you're gonna rotate the dough really often or your rolling pin. I learned this from Ina Gartner. So she just does like little turns in the middle and it helps your pie crust to not rip, to be an even size and to stay round. So lots of rotating and really often I check to make sure that it's not stuck. See, it's a little stuck. And so we're just gonna move it, we're gonna reflower. and now we're ready to go again. So I'm not doing big sweeping motions or anything, I'm just rolling it out kind of slow and steady from the center. And I got a little buckle in the middle, so just squish it back together. Use the heat of your finger to melt the, the fat together. No issue there. I'm gonna go hair larger. I normally just set my pan on it and I want it to overhang these edges by about two inches because that way it has room to fill up the edge and a little bit of overhang. I'm gonna go slightly larger. Okay, in my pie crust video, I showed everyone that how my mom does it, how my mom puts pie crust in the pie tin. She folds it in half and then folds it in quarters and then sets it and unfolds the quarter and unfolds the half. So I'm gonna show you the other way today. You can just roll it up. I prefer my mom's way. I don't know why. They move it over and then you just unroll it on it. So you have some options so you can find what you like. And again, I have a little crack in the middle. It's just not a big deal. You can, if this is an extra long piece, you can pinch it off and make it kind of thin and make a little patch or you can just use the heat of your finger to kind of bring it together. You are not gonna ruin this. You've got to have some faith in yourself. Pie crust is not nearly as hard as people think it is. And making apple pie, I hope that I'm proving that today. Okay, I have my bottom crust in. I'm going to do the exact same thing for my second crust. And this is going to be the top. See, it's already pretty tender. I'm a, it's a little bit on the dry side, and that's fine. I can press it together with my fingers, and that will, that's the nuance of making homemade pie crust. I'm just gonna keep putting it back together and encourage it. Removing it, it was stuck just a titch there, and we kind of prevented a really big sticking incident. I just need more flour. And it's actually okay to work with a fairly dry pie crust and kind of baby it like this because it leads to a really, a really flaky crust because you don't have extra moisture. You just have the fat, the shortening, and the butter, and the flour. So I'm just refolding and pinching it there to keep it more circular. Once you do this a time or two, you'll just get a feel for it. This one doesn't have to be quite as large because you're not filling in the edges of the pie crust. So it might be a bit thicker. Yep, that one overhangs. So these are the apples that we prepared together earlier and I'm just adding them to my pie plate. It is nice and full. I'm gonna kind of smash it down. And then we put, you just slice two tablespoons of butter. You just break them up and you put them. They help to, to make it a little saucy. It's real good. This is my sister-in-law Beth's recipe. She went to culinary school in Kentucky and she is so kind and shares lots of recipes with me. So here's the butter, just putting it on top. It'll melt in there and make it really nice. Okay, we're gonna wet the edge of the crust. So just use your fingers. I just filled up a, a used measuring cup. It doesn't matter if it had a little flour in it. This is kind of like the glue that's gonna help the, the top 
attached to the bottom. Ooh, it's pretty. Okay, so, and then this is my mom's way, quarters. And you just put it on a quarter, you unfold a half, unfold a half. So here we are, we have a beautiful heaping pie and I'm going to show you how to fold it. So I gently press around the edge to adhere where that water is and I just fold all of this in. It, it looks messy at first. <laughs> I know this. And see this one's overhanging a lot. I'm gonna remove some of that. I don't need that quite that much dough there. So I'm just folding it up onto itself. Do you see the edge? This one is quite long. You can use kitchen shears to trim it a little bit. Just fold it. We're kind of going with an up and over. Okay, so we have kind of a funny looking pie crust, but now we're gonna use our, these two fingers and our thumb. We're just gonna be pretty aggressive because we want a nice distinct shape. So I'm pushing what I folded up back into this pie crust. I'm pushing it back along the edge. Some people use a knuckle. So this pie bakes hot at 450 for just 15 minutes. Oh, I got a bulger. Stay in there, Apple. And then you lower the temperature to finish baking. Do you see that? You just flute those edges. If you want to go back through, you can. And it's just like a rustic, pretty, big domed pie. It's, it's fun. It's just a nine inch pie. And then you need to cut vent holes. So you just cut holes. You can cut a design. You could do a lattice top. You have a lot of flexibility here. We're just going basic. It's okay to... And this lets the steam escape. So I cut my holes. I have this giant pie. This is one egg white mixed with one tablespoon of water. And I don't generally do the edge. That will brown nice by itself. But I like to brush it on the top. Okay, we have got water, and then I like to dust it with sugar. If you have chubby sparkling sugar, it's so pretty. I spilled most of my bag, and I can't get it in stock anymore. Bob's Red Mill has a nice, uh, they just call it sparkling sugar. So we'll probably use a couple tablespoons here. You'll see when it comes out. It just makes it really pretty. So there is our done pie, and we're going to bake it. That's it. Not too bad. Okay, the pie is done. It's rustic. It smells amazing. Golden top. We're gonna cut into it and try it. Ooh, look at the apples. Oh, I lost half of them. Rookie mistake. So there's some of the apples that go with this piece. So it's, the crust is crisp, the apples are tender and cooked through. Only thing that's missing, vanilla ice cream. Thank you.